Bingo Star offers an appetizer that's pure New Orleans. If you want to make shrimp remoulade, try this version. It's in a Napoleon with slices of merleton or chayote. Thomas Furlish prepares a fish main course called Bouride. It contains an assortment of seafood, including red snapper, monkfish, codfish, mussels, clams, scallops, and shrimp. Brian Schoenbeck offers the menu finale from Chicago, a light cheesecake with a pine nut crust containing goat cheese and garnished with figs in port and balsamic vinegar. Richard Bingo Starr holds forth at Cuvée in downtown New Orleans. A native of the city, he tends to rework and modernize some of the dishes that made the city's culinary reputation. In 2000, Esquire's John Mariani named Cuvée the best new restaurant in the country. Here is shrimp and merleton Napoleon. Uh, right here we have a uh, merleton, also known as chayote, if you're in the southwest. Uh, in the squash family, very uh, popular vegetable in New Orleans. What we're going to do is we're just going to put a little peel on this. Just taking that very thin out layer of skin. If you're doing a lot of these, you may want to use a glove because it tends to have a little reaction with your skin. Then you want to get nice thin slices. Thin enough so you, that it'll cook with just the frying process. We're going to go from the top to the bottom stem end. And we're just going to run that right on the mandolin. First three or four slices are going to be a little too small for you. So you want to get down in the middle of the merleton. Okay. Once we have them sliced, and with the nice, big, thick middle pieces, take the little, they have a little seed in the middle. You want to make sure you get that out of there. Okay, we'll take these, season just a little, some of our Creole seasoning, both sides. All right, then you'll start breading. Flour. You want to keep one hand dry, one hand wet, so you don't end up with uh, flour gloves on your hands. That one, egg wash, wet hand into there, back into the flour. I'm going to get a nice coating on them. Sometimes, if the flour is not holding on too well, I'll hit them in the egg wash one more time. These look pretty nice, ready to go. If you're doing a lot of these, you can kind of par fry them battered first, then hit them right back in the fryer right before you're ready to assemble the dish. That'll work for you. Okay. These are ready to go. We'll take these, we'll drop these right into the deep fryer, 350 degrees, and just brown them. Okay, uh, now we're going to start to make the uh, traditional New Orleans Ramelade sauce. Uh, this will be tossed with our shrimp. Uh, we're going to start out with a little of our uh, homemade mayonnaise, about a cup. And uh, you can adjust this, how do you like it? That. Also, we'll hit a little Creole mustard, whole grain mustard. I'll go in there. And a little ketchup. And also a little sour cream. So your main ingredients. Get this mixed together. If you're looking for a kind of a light pink color. Okay, once we got that mixed, we're gonna go ahead and hit it, hit a little fresh uh, chopped celery, some green onions. A little chopped egg. And some horseradish. Mix that again. It's starting to look about right. Finish it off, we'll season it. Black pepper, a little salt. A little more Creole seasoning and some Louisiana hot sauce. 
righty? You see how it looks thick like that? We want to thin it out just a little bit. What I usually use, just a little heavy cream. Right here I have some uh, boiled, like 36, 40 count shrimp. They've been boiled on lemon, salt, pepper, bay leaves, and a little uh, crab oil. Here go your shrimp. A little of our ramelot sauce in there. Ready? The shrimp then are just tossed with the ramelot sauce. Presentation begins with a little of the remoulade. All right, then we begin the uh, layering procedure. A little chip and merlaton. A little bit of our shrimp remoulade. Another merlaton chip. Uh, don't be shy to press it down a little bit so stay standing up. A little more of our shrimp ramelade. Another chip. And just a little shrimp over the top. All right, on the top, we're gonna garnish that. Just a little frisé lettuce. A little con texture contrast. Just a little bit of olive oil on there. A little salt. A little pepper to season that lettuce up. Toss that, kind of get that in a nice little bunch so it's gonna stand up for you. Lay that right on top. We'll finish it off. A little chive, pretty garnish. We have some little red and yellow pepper confetti. Put a little that on top. And that is a Shrimp Ramelade and Merloton Napoleon. executive chef at New York's Café des Artistes is Thomas Furlish, a native of Austria. He attended hotel school in Vienna, then apprenticed at, among others, the Hotel Belvedere in Switzerland. In 1991, he came to Café des Artistes, and his entree is a Provençal-style casserole called burrite. The burrite is started with onion, leek, fennel, celery, carrot, and garlic. Okay, gonna add some fresh tomatoes to it. Some white wine. And before we're gonna add the fish stock to it, we're gonna let the white wine uh, evaporate now, reduce, so the alcohol comes out. We have a bouquet garni here, fresh thyme, parsley, bay leaves. Come in there. I'll put some, some pepper. Can add a little bit cayenne. Some salt we're gonna add to it. Can have a little bit of saffron in it. Now it's boiling already. Okay. Now we're gonna add our fish stock. Okay, we always can add more to it afterwards. Okay, gonna put a lid on. Uh, 
We are making the aioli now. The aioli basically is a garlic saffron mayonnaise. Um, I have some homemade mayonnaise here. I have some lemon juice here, some fresh garlic, some cayenne, some pepper, some salt, and a saffron reduction. I'm gonna add half the mayonnaise. I'm gonna add some of my of my saffron reduction in there. Okay. This was made by dissolving saffron threads in water. The garlic. Okay, I'm gonna put some some cayenne. I like my aioli with a little bite in it. Okay, also, there's nothing wrong to put like a splash of beno in it. Okay, uh, our Broth with the vegetables. The vegetables are soft now. I'm gonna remove uh, the bougegani. Okay, it's a beautiful color. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna puree it. I'm gonna mix it. Okay, in the meantime, we have our seafood here. We have some uh, some Manila clams. Some mussels, those are Prince Edward Island mussels, cultivated mussels. I have some uh, beautiful red snapper fillet, some cod, Chatham cod from New England, uh, some monkfish, okay. shrimps, scallops. Okay. I have a casserole here, which is hadori by now. Okay. We're gonna put some, uh, some olive oil in there. Okay, put our shellfish in there. Give them a head start to cook. Cover them up so the steam will uh, help opening them. Okay. okay. Now we're gonna put that liquid to our seafood. Okay. Season the seafood. Add it to the liquid, and now that seafood is gonna be poached in that liquid. Once uh, the seafood is gonna be ready, we're gonna add aioli to the dish, and it will be ready for serving. Uh, it takes approximately, for that amount, uh, you see, the time, time is always re relevant, depending on how much firepower you have, how big your pot is, it will take approximately um, seven to eight minutes. Just before service, the soup is flavored with some orange zest, and some of the liquid is tempered into the aioli. Back. Okay. Okay, so you put it in the bowl and uh, you also can decorate it with some of the fennel greens which you have kept from, from your fennel bulbs. Serve it with uh, extra aioli on the side, some um, baguettes or garlic bread, and that's it. Wonderful dish.
All the pastry work at the Park Hyatt Chicago is overseen by Brian Schoenbeck. Being in a big city hotel, however, has not stifled creativity. In 1999, he was named one of the top 10 pastry chefs in America by Pastry Art and Design magazine. He presents a signature, goat cheese cake with pine nut crust. Uh, I'm gonna be making a lemon uh, goat cheese cheesecake. Take the goat cheese. Sugar. Split the vanilla bean, scrape it out. Lime zest and lime juice. Twelve egg yolks are added on an electric mixer, which is obviously on its last leg. With dueling kitchen aids, egg whites are beaten to soft peaks. Uh, for the pine nut crust, we have uh, basically pine nuts, sugar, and some butter that's soft. Um, we mix those in a RoboCoop. So it's completely uh, mixed. And then we take a sort of a rounded, uh, kind of a square with rounded corners. Uh, we put some foil on, on the mold, and we take the crust, and we bake it for approximately six to eight minutes at 350 degrees, and then the cheesecake filling goes inside. Just mix it well, make, making sure that everything is incorporated. It's important you don't over whip the egg whites. It'll make the filling look broken otherwise. We're gonna bake the, uh, once the filling goes into the, into the mold, we're gonna bake it in a water bath at 350 degrees. And it should take about 12 minutes. Okay, the egg whites are soft peak. We'll uh, fold that into the cheesecake, to the rest of the filling. Once the filling is mixed, we'll spoon it into our mold, filling it almost, almost to the top. The egg whites really lighten up the mix, and it's a very, very light cheesecake. Bake it in a water bath. Three hundred and fifty degrees, approximately ten minutes. Okay, for our port wine and balsamic vinegar reduction, reduce uh, one bottle of port wine. And basically what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna bring it up to a boil and we're gonna add some glucose to it 
I don't want to reduce it too much, but the glucose is going to give it some body without adding sweetness to it. Uh, also, also in the uh, in our reduction, we're going to add the peel of one lemon. We're going to add some fresh thyme and some vanilla bean powder to that also. Fig pieces are warmed in the wine balsamic reduction just before presentation. The sauce will thicken as it reduces a little bit more. And we're just heating it up enough just to cook the, the, uh, the figs just slightly, just to soften them just a little bit. served with pine nut basil ice cream.